Good morning, I'm Frank Selke, Chairman of the Committee on Scientific Sections Program, and next to me is uh, Eric Peterson, the Vice Chair of the Committee. And Eric, I think the AHA has put together a tremendous program uh, this year. We have attendees uh, uh, numbering over 18,000 from uh, 100 countries. We have over 200 exhibitors and over 5,000 presentations. So again, uh, this is gonna be a, a tremendous opportunity for networking and to learn the newest in cardiovascular science. No, it's really exciting, Frank. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here and as, as are many of us here. Uh, let's start out with the late breaking clinical trials. Uh, first would be one called Euclid study. This is gonna be one of the largest uh, peripheral artery disease or PAD studies ever conducted. We'll talk about what's the right secondary prevention to be used in these patients in terms of antiplatelet therapy. Uh, we also have the precision trial. It's, it's dealing with uh, uh, celecoxib and other non uh, steroidal anti-inflammatory agents. It's important because it's still very controversial and uh, what the safety pro profile is for these agents. This is a large trial and hopefully it will give us some answers uh, as to the safety uh, of these drugs. Another high profile trial is the ART trial or the arterial revascularization trial. It's comparing the use of a single internal mammary artery and two internal mammary arteries for bypass surgery. This again is a very controversial area. Uh, a lot of surgeons and cardiologists are sure they know the answer. Uh, we'll see if uh, these clinicians are correct. That's actually what I like about the sciences here, Frank. So many questions are being answered are the ones that have bothered us for years in clinical practice. HOPE 3 is one that's an interesting one. We've always wondered whether in terms of lowering cholesterol and controlling blood pressure would translate into better cognitive outcomes. Would our patients who've had their risk factors treated for their heart also help their head? And it'll be interesting to sort of finally get at some of the answers to that. Another one that's bothered us has been the people uh, who've had atrial fibrillation who then need a stent. What is the right co concoction or co cocktail of therapies that would result in best outcomes but not get too much bleeding? And in part, the Pioneer study will answer that question for us. Another interesting trial is the reduced LAP-HF trial. Diastatic heart failure or heart failure with preserved ejection fraction uh, still uh, is problematic because we really don't have any good treatment for this. Uh, this is a trial which takes a very unique approach. approach. It has an intra uh, atrial device which shunts blood uh, from the left side to the right side and hopefully will provide some therapy for these patients. The uh, other topic that I think beyond the late breaking trials that are exciting uh, is the idea of just where science is going. The excitement around uh, digital technology and innovation. There's a whole session devoted to the idea of where tech is going and how can we integrate the newest and greatest in tech into our clinical practices. We also have an entire day devoted to cell therapy. It covers everything from basic aspects to clinical science. Uh, it's a tremendous program and should give us uh, the newest information in this area of investigation. Uh, there are other frontiers in science programs on arrhythmias, uh, vascular biology, and uh, 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 thrombosis. So uh, whatever area you have an interest in, I think scientific sessions uh, is a good place to get the latest information. Final thing I'd like to highlight is the precision medicine initiatives. The AHA has a number of those that are being launched and, and has sort of made a lot of news. And at even these sessions, there are special sessions set aside on how you might use genetics, biomarkers, other technologies to better define which therapy is right for which patient. We've also increased the educational content. We have simulation programs in TAVR and uh, uh, ventricular assist devices, uh, treatment of endocarditis and, and the pathophysiology. Uh, so it's, a tr again, a tremendous venue for not only networking, but to learn the newest in cardiovascular science. Actually, that sums it up pretty well. I think these are going to be exciting five days of science, opportunities to meet and greet with friends, and finally to enjoy New Orleans. Hope you all enjoy.